What's up guys, Justin here, and I've got a pickup video for you today. I've actually got quite a bit of stuff from the thrift stores in this video. I've been having some decent luck at the thrift stores recently, uh, despite the $150 Rock Band 2 set that I had posted on Facebook. Uh, prices at the Goodwill are getting pretty ridiculous now, but I actually did have some luck there last week, so I'll start out by showing what I found. Uh, it was kind of a weird variety of stuff to find all on one day, but I got a couple NES games here. And it's been so long since I found any NES games at the Goodwill. There's actually four of them there that day. I only ended up picking up two of them, though. Uh, the first one I got here was Arkanoid. And uh, as you can see, it was $3.99. And I'm very glad that Goodwill is finally putting the prices on their price tags. I'd gone on that mini rant a while back about how they just put like generic color stickers and I, I never knew how much I was going to get charged so it's good to see that they're actually putting the prices on the games now. Uh, 3 dollars though is twice as much as I used to charge for any cartridge game so it's kind of disappointing in that regard but at least I don't have to wonder anymore what they're going to charge me. So I actually did not have this game so I was happy to pick it up for my collection. I believe this one had that special controller that you could use to play it. I, I don't think it's required to play the game but um, someone could correct me if I'm wrong. But uh, either way I was happy to get the game for my collection and I'll be looking out for the controller for it. And the other NES game I got was Mike Tyson's Punch-Out! But oddly enough, as you can see, this one was $6.99. And I didn't even realize that while I was in the store. I went up and I, I paid for everything that I bought, and I was kind of, while I was walking out to my car, I was kind of like doing the math in my head for my total, and I was like, wait a minute, and I was like, that doesn't seem right. And then I checked my receipt, and I was like, what, $6.99 for what? And then I looked at the game, and sure enough, $6.99. Um, which, I mean, is a, still a good deal for Mike Tyson's Punch-Out, but why was it almost twice as much as the other games? And, and both the other games that were there were also $3.99, so once again, I, I'm thinking there's a little bit of price check-in going on now, which is kind of um, disheartening, but whatever, $6.99, again, decent deal for the game. Uh, the two that I left there, I believe, were, it was like MLB Baseball. And then there was, I think, RC Pro-Am, too, that was pretty beat up. So I, I left those there for somebody else. But also there on that day, um, I found a whole set of Wii cables. Uh, we've got the AV cord here, and a uh, power brick, and then a sensor bar, all first-party original Nintendo brand. And these were all $1.99 uh, a piece. So I figured for 6 bucks to pick up the whole Wii uh, cord bundle. I don't have an extra system at the moment, but I'm sure I will in the future, and I've got controllers and stuff I can pair with it, so I figured those will come in handy in the future. And then in their glass case that day, um, they actually had a Game Boy Color sitting there, a purple, or atomic purple, Game Boy Color, and so I, the price tag was on the back, so I couldn't see how much it was. I asked one of the employees to take it out of the case for me, thinking it was going to be like 15 bucks or something, but it was actually only $7.99. And so I checked it out, made sure it had the battery covered, there's no like corrosion or anything in there. And actually the screen is in really, really nice shape. It had some like smudges and fingerprints on it and stuff, but I cleaned it up and it looks great and I tested it and it works great. So for $7.99, I really <laughs> can't complain with that price. Like I said, I was half expecting it to be $15, $20. Bucks. But anyway, so that was a, a decent day at the Goodwill. Awesome to finally see some NES games there again. So I'll move on now to some finds from our local St. Vincent de Paul. They had their spring premiere last week, which is basically they closed down for like three or, three or four days, and then they reopened with all new inventory. They restocked the entire store, and they were reopening on like a Friday morning at 9 o'clock, I think. So Ryan and I got there like half hour, 20 minutes early, so we were like towards the front of the line. Uh, believe it or not, there is actually a line for these things. It's mostly just old people and stuff, but uh, we were right up front. As soon as they opened the door, I sprinted for they put the games out. Ryan sprinted back to like the electronics section. We both found, both found some decent stuff. Uh, I'll start out with some PlayStation stuff. Uh, the first one I picked up here was Worms World Party. And uh, this case is pretty destroyed. It's all cracked up there on the top. It was a former GameStop copy, it looks like. But um, I thought it was cool to pick this one up. I did not have this one for my PlayStation 1 collection. It was complete. Uh, the disc isn't in great condition. Uh, it's got some like swirls and stuff on it, uh, some light scratching, but nothing deep. I'm sure it'll play. And uh, again, I didn't have this one for my collection, so I think it was like a dollar and 84 cents. It might have been two dollars and 50 cents. I, I really can't remember, but um, either way, it was worth picking up. And then this one, uh, I would have been kicking myself if I did not pick this one up. I was debating not even getting this one. We were standing in line at the, the checkout, and I was kind of talking to Ryan. Uh, it's missing the manual, so I was like, you know, do I want to buy it? Do I not want to buy it? Very glad that I picked this one up. It's uh, Herc's Adventures. 
like I said, it's missing the manual, and I knew this game was was pretty hard to find. But for whatever reason, I, without having the manual, without seeing the artwork and stuff, it just it didn't click with me at the time. So I, like I said, I would have been kicking myself if I didn't pick this up for like two bucks or whatever it was, because this actually is a really hard game to find. Really, really wish it was complete, um, but. I don't know, I was checking out the back, and um, I, I don't really know much about it. It looks kind of like a, like a Sega CD game of sorts, I mean, just from looking at the back. But um, I'll be hanging on to this one and looking to complete it. If I know it's a long shot, and I know not everyone just has an extra manual for this game sitting around, but if anyone has the Herx Adventures manual, uh, please hit me up. I would love to work out a trade and uh, complete this one. So, the last PlayStation 1 game I got here uh, was another one that I, I had posted a picture of up on Facebook. Um, it's the Street Fighter Plus, and it's in this cardboard sleeve here. I, I had no idea what this was when I saw it. Um, and then here's the back here, Street Fighter Plus, and it's got these three games on the bottom there on the disc. And this was like a dollar and 86 cents or whatever. I was looking at it, I was like, I don't know what this is. It's Street Fighter, why not pick it up? So I was trying to find some information on it, could not find anything on it, eventually just posted it up on Facebook. And I think the general consensus is that it is definitely a bootleg of some sorts, which definitely makes sense. Uh, I mean, looking on the back, the artwork on the bottom is very low quality. I mean, I could barely even read the, the names of some of those games on the bottom. And then <laughs> the best part of all <laughs> is the disc though. Uh, the artwork printed on the disc, it looks legit, but I mean the name of the game is cut off on the bottom of the disc. And then the best part of all is at the top of the disc it says PlayStation, which is two words, Original Silver. They spelt the word original wrong on the top of the disc. And it's not just printed there once, it's printed four times along the side of the disc. And I, just, I thought that was hilarious when I saw that, I mean, clearly... Um, it's a bootleg or, or pirated copy of some sort, but I'm actually kind of curious to try it out and see if it actually has all three of the games on there and if they're actually like full versions of the game and not just, you know, some bootleg shortened copies or, or made up copies of the game, I don't know. So I'll have to let you guys know on that. They also had a couple Sega Genesis games there on that day. I picked up uh, both of the ones that they had. Only one of them had the, the box with it, but it was uh, Where in Time is Carmen San Diego. And uh, these are the plastic bags I was explaining in the the last video when I was talking about how they put all the all their games. They put all the, like their CD, you know, their um, GameCube, Xbox, PS, you know, whatever in these cases, which makes it really inconvenient because you have to open them to see if the disc is even in there, if it's complete, or if the disc is in you know crap shape or whatever. Um, so I was able to look in this one a little bit to confirm that the cartridge was in there. I don't know about the manual, but I suppose since I already bought it and paid for it, that I can just go ahead and open it now. Um, Moment of truth, no manual, <laughs> um, but it does have a registration card or something, it looks like. Yeah, a registration card in there, and the cartridge is in there. So for, I think it was $2 and, yeah, $2.44, I figured why not, I don't own this one yet. Um, once again, if anyone has this manual, uh, let me know, we'll work something out, I'd like to complete this one as well. And then the other Genesis game they had there was just a loose cartridge, but it was definitely worth picking up for $2.44. It's uh, Herzog Zwei, or maybe it's Herzog Zwei, forgive me if I pronounced it wrong. Um, I've never, I, I've heard of the game before, but I've never actually seen it myself. Really wish this one was complete. This would be an awesome one to have complete. I know this one is, is harder to find, and I've also heard that it's a very, very good game. But, um, I mean, the cartridge is in decent shape. It's got a little bit of wear at the top, and then it's got this sticker over here that I can probably easily take off. So, for $2.44, hell yeah, definitely picking that up. And then what Ryan found over in the electronics section, uh, they didn't have any systems or anything, unfortunately, but we did find a couple controllers. Um, here's a black GameCube controller here. And I haven't tested it yet, but I mean, all the buttons feel like it should work fine. It was $1.46 only, which was cool on that. And then sitting next to that um, for $2.46, I don't know why the uh, the price difference, but um, was a blue PlayStation 2 controller. Once again, it feels like it should work. Haven't tested it. It's got a little bit of a rattle going on in there, like a real small piece of plastic. So, crossing my fingers that it works, but if not, it's not the end of the world. So, that was all we found on that day at the Vinnie's. Uh, my total was uh, actually my total was like thirty some dollars. I actually did pick up something else. It was uh, a record player, and um, I don't 
normally like buy record players or records or anything, but um, it was actually one of those Crosley uh, Stackomatic record players. That's it's from like 2004. It's newer, but it's like briefcase style, so it folds up and it's fully transportable and everything. And it was only 15 bucks, so I thought it was really cool. I figured it was worth at least 15 bucks just to even mess around with. I got some records <laughs> lying around the house or whatever, so I've been having some fun with that. Now, after we left the St. Vincent de Paul, uh, Ryan and I were hanging out for a bit. He had to take off and go to work, but on my way home, I actually stopped by a local resale shop. It's not like a thrift store or anything, it, it's more of like a resale store. And I never really go there, they never really have anything video game related, but it's in the same parking lot pretty much as the gas station that I always go to and I was filling up my gas tank anyway so I figured I might as well just stop in and I was looking through their DVDs and stuff and they just have a really really small selection of well anything media related really but I did find a PlayStation game actually uh, Spyro Ripto's Rage for the PS1 and it looks like this is the one that came with the uh, the collector's edition which I think I must have had the first Spyro and then this one and Year of the Dragon I think was the last one. Um, I've never owned Year of the Dragon. I'd really like to get like the full collector's edition set with the three games. Um, I got like the GTA set in one of our previous videos so I think it'd be really cool to get this one complete. Um, I know that it goes for quite a bit more money though but I'll be looking out for that in the future. This was cool to pick up though and it was only a dollar so, I mean, with tax, it was like a dollar and, and six cents or whatever. Uh, but it's, I just find it funny that, you know, a local resale shop, which is, I'm assuming, for profit, has considerably cheaper prices than any of the thrift stores in our town. I don't know. I just thought that was kind of funny. But I'm not going to turn that down for a dollar. Okay, so to wrap up this video, I will show some eBay purchases. Uh, this first one here is actually kind of coincidental because it is uh, Worms World Party for the Dreamcast. So I picked up the uh, where is it? the PlayStation version earlier in the video, so it's kind of cool to get the Dreamcast version as well. I think I paid like $7 for this on eBay. Uh, when it came to me in the mail, actually earlier today, the front of the case was just cracked to hell. And, I mean, it was, it was cracked in the picture that they showed, just a real small crack right here, but when I got it, I mean, the whole top was just, I mean, it was all smashed in, in, the, in the case, and I was worried that the disc was going to be cracked when I opened it, but um, luckily the disc survived, and there's no scratches or anything on it, and the manual's in, still in decent shape, so I threw a new cover on it, and I was happy to pick that one up for the Dreamcast collection. Kind of interested to see how... Um, they compare. I mean, obviously the Dreamcast version should be the superior version, at least as far as graphics go. Who knows about the gameplay? I'll have to check that out. But seven bucks for that. And then this next game here is actually a DS game, which was a 100% eBay impulse decision. Um, I was just going through making my like eBay rounds or whatever, and I came across this game. It had like 20 minutes left on the auction. And uh, it was it was still like I think it was still at 99 cents with free shipping. So like 10, 15 seconds left, I threw in a bid of like four bucks or something, and I won it for like three dollars and fifty cents with free shipping. Uh, it's called Soul Bubbles, and I, I literally have no clue <laughs> what this game is. Whatever uh, gameplay I find <laughs> right up here is going to be the first I've ever seen of this. But uh, what drew me to it was it says only at Toys R Us. So I. You know, kind of led me to believe that it was a Toys R Us exclusive. Might be harder to find. I don't know. But I'm um, looking. I mean, it looks like kind of a cool game. I mean, it looks it looks like a puzzle game. Um, I'm assuming it is. I'm not 100% sure on that though. But Soul Bubbles for three dollars and uh, fifty cents on eBay. And these last couple eBay purchases here are actually 360 games. Uh, the first one here I actually want to talk about for a minute or two. It's Project Silphied Arc of Deception. And wow, do I have to give a huge shout out! to whoever it was that left a comment on one of our previous videos and told me to look out for this game. They had mentioned that GameStop was actually selling this for $2.99 and I went up to our local GameStop as, as soon as I found out about this and they actually did have a copy but of course it was disc only <laughs> so didn't end up picking that one up. I went on eBay when I got home and, and I found this copy here for $5.95 with free shipping. I was willing to pay that just because I, I really wanted to try the game out. It was listed in like new condition and uh, it's actually in really nice shape. The case has got a couple cracks on it though so I'll have to replace that but the disc was in perfect shape and it's got the manual in there. And uh, wow, this game is truly, truly brilliant. Ryan and I were playing it the other night and I, I will admit that my first impression of it when I first started going through like the tutorials and stuff was, okay, these controls are slippery, I don't know if I can get into this, but after I actually finished the tutorials and realized how detailed the controls were, it's it's awesome. It's serious. I mean, it takes some getting used to for sure, 
but it is really, really cool. And it's not easy though. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's definitely hard and it, it takes some getting used to, like I mentioned, Ryan and I played through the, the first mission, like the first part of the first mission multiple times just to beat it. But eventually we got the hang of it and we are really, really enjoying this one. Really, really cool game. And I mean, it's a Square Enix game. So that was another thing that, that drew me to it. It's definitely got that Japanese feel to it, but I mean, it's, it's like an open world like space shooter. So very, very cool game here. Definitely recommend this one. Uh, if you can find it at your local GameStop, they do sell it for $2.99, I can confirm that. So keep your eye out for this one. Very, very cool game. And okay, on to the last game for this pick-up video. Excuse me for one second, this has a story to go along with it. Okay, so I'll go ahead and show what it is first, then I'll tell the, uh, the very interesting story to uh, end this video. It's the uh, Grand Theft Auto 4 and episodes from Liberty City combination here or the uh, the complete edition as it says on the top there and it was a journey <laughs> finding this game uh, I think GameStop sells it for like over 20 bucks so I wasn't gonna pay that I knew it went for cheaper on eBay and this is actually not the first copy of the game that I received from eBay the first one I ordered I got it for like five dollars with like three dollars shipping and it was listed in very good condition it was a stock photograph but it said very good condition complete everything's in there and what I received was one of the most beat up games I had ever seen in my life. Uh, case was cracked, manuals were, the map wasn't folded up correctly so that was all jacked up and the, the manual had all the corners were folded, both of the game discs that were in here were scratched to hell. And so I messaged the, the seller about it and I was like, you know, can I either return this or I'm going to have to get, you know, half refund or something. I, I figured if I could get like, you know, four or five dollars back, I'd just keep it, whatever, figure out something to do with it, buy myself a new one. But the seller was very upset with me, didn't they offer me like a, like a dollar or two refund. And eventually I was just like, you know what, I'll just, I'll return the game. Uh, it's going to cost me two dollars and some change to return it and I'll get my eight dollars back or whatever. So ended up returning that one. They were not happy about that, but I was not happy with the condition at all. So then I ordered this one. Again, similar price, uh, $4.99, and it was plus a few dollars shipping. This one was actually listed in like new condition. Again, stock photograph though. So after learning my lesson the first time, after I won the auction, I sent the seller a quick message, and I just said, hey, I, I, you know, I won your Grand Theft Auto auction. Before I pay, can you just please confirm for me that you know it's in like new condition and it's got the manual, the map, and, and both game discs, and they're not scratched or anything. And the response I got was truly priceless. The seller, uh, I can't remember like word for word what they said, but it was something along the lines of, really, you win the auction and then have the nerve to ask if it's complete and everything. And it went as far, they went as far as to say that they would rather throw the game away than sell it to me and that they were never ever going to send me the game no matter what I did. And I mean like, what do you even say to that? It was like an $8 transaction. So I looked at their feedback, they had like 650 some feedback, 100% positive. So like my response was just, you know, like really? You're going to ruin your perfect feedback over an $8 transaction? And then after another message of, of similar fashion, try bashing me uh, for being a horrible eBayer and everything, about a couple minutes later I got the apology message, oh sorry, you know, didn't mean to offend you, I, this is the third time I've sold the game, and uh, you know, no one's paid for it so far, I'm really frustrated, I'm sorry. And I, I just didn't even respond, I was so over it at that point, I was like, screw it, I'll just buy it from somebody else, I don't care. Uh, but of course they opened an unpaid item case, I'm assuming to get their fees back and stuff, and I finally sent them a message and said, hey, you know, what's the, what's the deal, like if I pay for it, are you going to send me it, is it in like new condition? And they told me that it was uh, in like new condition, that the map manual had never even been taken out, and again that they were like sorry for offending me or whatever. And so I paid for it, whatever, finally got in the mail, and um, I actually am <laughs> very happy with the condition. You could tell that it was actually never even played, I mean both discs are flawless, and these you could tell were never even taken out of the case. So after all that, <laughs> I finally have myself a copy of this game. Um, I'm probably not going to play through GTA 4 again, Ryan and I played through most of that one anyway, and, and to be honest, it really was probably my least favorite GTA game, um, but GTA 5 was awesome, and I heard that Episodes from Liberty City is actually pretty cool, so I'm excited to check that one out. But anyway, um, that was all I had to show for this pickup video, sorry about that little rant there, I just figured I would share that story with you guys. Anyway, I want to thank you guys for sticking around and checking out the whole video, and until next time. Take care.